I love that quote from Warren Buffett. The best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you earn. It's a reminder that to be the best leader, you have got to take care of yourself first. If you are here, it's probably because you are juggling a lot while trying to lead your team. But here's the thing, investing in yourself pay off big time in leadership. So if you are wondering where to start, stick around. In this video, I will share five impactful ways you can invest in yourself as a leader. Let's get started. Contrary to common belief, investing in yourself as a leader is not a luxury, but a necessity. I'm sure you heard the expression, the grass is greener on the other side. Well, in leadership, the truth is that the grass is greener where you water it. I like to think of learning new things as planting seeds for my growth journey. Each new piece of knowledge I pick up contributes to my development as a leader. If you are stepping into a leadership role for the first time, like I was seven years ago, investing in workshops, conferences, or online courses focused on leadership, communication, and stress management can be super helpful, but those could be expensive and time-consuming, and that is the reason I prefer to follow Warren Buffett's approach. Did you know that he spent a whooping 80% of his day reading, and his partner, Charlie Munger, followed the same practice? These titans of business believe in continuous learning, and their success is a testament to that. Now, if reading isn't your thing, no worries. You can still learn through listening. Audiobooks are everywhere. So here is a challenge. Carve out at least one hour a day for reading or listening to books or resources that help you grow as a leader or in your industry. If an hour seems too much, start with 30 minutes. Remember, investing in yourself is always worth it. Processing feedback can sometimes be challenging for me. It is not always easy to recognize faults or issues and address them on my own. That's where having a coach or a mentor helps. They can offer fresh perspectives and insights, pointing out things I might have missed or potential stumbling blocks. With their guidance, I can make adjustments and prepare for the future. I strongly believe in the power of coaching. Like Bill Gates said, everyone needs a coach. A coach serves as your external support system offering valuable advice and guidance to help you succeed. I meet with my mentor once a week, and I discuss problems I'm facing and we talk about alternative plans of actions. I always leave the meeting with fresh perspective and concrete steps of what to do. Having a coach or a mentor is invaluable, and it's equally important to pay it forward and be a mentor to someone else. Think of your brain as a muscle. It needs regular exercise to stay sharp. Prioritizing your mental health is key to stay in top shape. Here are a couple of simple ways to take care of your mental well-being. Practice mindfulness. Whether it's through meditation, deep breathing, exercise, or mindful walks, taking a moment to clear your mind can help you approach tasks with a renewed focus and perspective. I find that ending my day with a brief mindfulness practice allows me to sleep like a rock. Try journaling. Think of journaling as a way to declutter your mind. By putting your thoughts onto paper, you can gain clarity and fresh perspective on things. Start with just once a week and notice the benefit it brings to your overall well-being. Limit screen time. It's tempting to stay plugged in all the time, but unplugging from screens for even a short period each day can do wonders for your mental health. I limit my phone usage to under two hours a day and I find myself more present and focused on what's happening around. Every leader has their blind spots, those little areas where we might not see our weaknesses and where we could improve. When I give feedback, I always try to do it in a way that is helpful, not hurtful. I praise publicly and offer constructive criticisms privately. And you know what? When I provide my feedback, I anticipate receiving feedback from my team as well. I ask my team for feedback at least once a month. I want to know how I'm doing as their leader and how can I do better. And you know what? How do I respond to that feedback is very important. Whether it's positive or negative, I always say thank you. It shows my team that I value their input and that I'm committing to growing and improving as a leader. So if you are not already doing it, I encourage you to start asking for feedback from your team. It might feel a little uncomfortable at first, but trust me, it's worth it. It's how we grow both as a leader 
and as a team. Protecting your space is vital for self-investment as a team leader. It's not just about self-care and well-being, it also involves learning to say no when necessary. This means establishing boundaries and prioritizing rest and personal time, especially when feeling overwhelmed. Learn to decline additional tasks and disconnect from work after hours and during holidays. Begin with a simple exercise. Practice saying no. Make holidays and weekends non-negotiable for yourself to allow for essential breaks and recharge time. You can travel more when your gas tank is full. Similarly, preparing and recharging during breaks allows you to approach each new week refreshed and ready to work. If you want to know what are the five books every leader must read, check this video. Thanks for watching. See you next week.